What's up, what's up? This is your homie, Maul, the pimp right here, a.k.a. MTP, and this is the Pimp Hollow TV Podcast. And I got a long-time partner of mine. We go way back in 2004, you know what I'm saying? Let me introduce who I got. This is my guy right here, one-fourth of the legendary New Orleans group, Shopper City Boys, which was presented by BG. Uh, now he's moved forward and got his own thing going on, CPO, which is Clutch Players Entertainment. I'm talking about my dog, Snipe. Welcome to Pimp Hollow TV Podcast. How you doing, homie? Now, what's up? What's up, Pimp? You already know, you know what I'm saying? What's been going on, Snipe? Where, where you at right now, man? I'm out here in Atlanta right now, you know what I'm saying? What's going on in Atlanta? What you working on? I know you're up to something, man. Yeah, man. I Actually, I just was in the studio, what, yesterday? You know what I'm saying? Dropped a little cut called Magic Show, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to promote that. That's about to be my new single, you feel me? That bitch, real official. It's, you know, it's female-driven, you know what All I'm right. saying? And I, also, to get in the studio with a few cash, you feel me? Get my network on. Pretty much just the grind. You know, you know how it go. All right, Magic Show, that's the first single off the uh, upcoming mixtape, uh, All On Me, right? Yeah. All right, explain where the title came from and kind of what can we expect with this new Snipe mixtape right here? Um, pretty much I want to pay homage, you know what I'm saying, to the big homie Jizzle, you know what I'm saying, Jizzle. You know, he came with the All On You, you feel me? So, at the end of the day, I feel like it's all on me, you know what I'm saying? Like. Everything I do is all on me, so that's basically why, you know, the name generated from, you feel me? But like I said, it was more in me, the big homie. All right. I'll just go back to the beginning tonight. All right. Uh, now, you, you got introduced to the nation and to the industry as a member of the Chopper City Boys, Snipe, via Mike, rest in peace, High Kizzle, and Golf. How did the whole Chopper City relationship come about? How did you actually get with Chopper City and be uh, Actually, I had, a, um, you know, a manager, you feel me, before I got with Chopper City. Uh, you know, his name was Troy. Um, he introduced me to Jeezy. You know what I'm I knew of Jeezy because I always been around some type of, you know, I had some type of connection, you feel me, to right. being a, you know, so, and God, you know, I was all cool with God. I was all cool with God before the rap. And basically, like I said, the manager I had, Troy Lawrence, he introduced me to one of my mutual partners, you feel me, well, he wasn't my mutual partner, my friend, you feel me, named Breeder, rest in peace, Breeder. You know, he introduced me, Breeder introduced me to Troy, and Troy linked me up with Jizzle, you know what I'm saying, because he had connections with Jizzle, you feel me, and, you know, Jeezy came, he heard me, you know, spit and fuck like I the rest of his history, you know what I'm saying, he put me down. He did, right. made me All right, now, how, how, long, how long after meeting him did you actually become official, like, from just meeting Jesus to, I, I'm officially part of the label? What was the time frame? Uh, I would say... It took maybe after he heard me rap to him or whatever, he came, you know, where I was living at in the East. He came to my apartment, heard me spit, and I rolled with him you know, a few times. And I was still grinding, you feel me? But Paul, it was like, man, let's go. We're taking you on the board official. It's official, you know what I'm saying? You about to be a part of the label. So it took like maybe like a few months, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. A few months. All right, all right. Now, the first album you appeared on, on a national level, which one would that be right there, nationwide? I would, would have to say that was Living Legend. Living Legend, Living Legend, yeah. Living Legend, for sure. Then came Life After Cash Money, which was when I came there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and then from there, come the Chopper City Boys album. Let's, now, this one, let's, let's talk about this right here from an artist's perspective now. BG is a big artist, and y'all are his artists that he's presenting, that he's coming out. So explain the grind and the hustle that you have to, that you have to put in, because uh, you didn't come in to get your album right away. Y'all still had to play the background and build your fan base and set yourself up and wait till it's a proper time. And so explain what that, what that, what that situation was like, just working I mean, hustle, but your album is not out. It's always coming. That shit was a constant grind, you know what I'm saying? Because I started out, you know, as a bag boy. I started out holding nigga luggage. You right. feel me? To keep it around, you know, to keep it all the way real. And... I would, I, I, I actually, our album, our first album, it was option. You feel me? With Koch. You know what I'm saying? You know, the big homie, you feel me? He took that opportunity and presented it to us and, you know, gave us the opportunity for the world to hear us. And for, like I say, the grind, it was just a grind. You know, I came up holding bags. We play in the studio, dropping mixtape after mixtape, eating the streets up, you feel me? Touring, going here and there, being a hype man. You know, that shit was just, you know, it was just all preparing us, you feel me, for what was about to come. You dig? And like I said, it was just, it was consistent, you feel me? Like, we just stayed on the road, you know what I'm saying? Stayed in our established writing, you know what I'm saying? Just preparing for the situation, you feel me? And 
one day it came and printed itself and you know, fuck, he presented us with the album opportunity. We jumped on it, we recorded our album in Detroit, you know what I'm saying, we just got it in, you feel me? Yeah, yeah it was Chum definitely a long grind coming. The Chopper City Boys are featured on the Living Legend album, the feature on Life After Cash Money album. They're going across the world tour on BG, they're on BET. Now, here comes the album, we got this. Your album, it's finally your time. What was the feeling you got knowing that that was about to come out? It's on you now, it's all on you this time, you feel me? What was the, what was the, give me that first vibe you got knowing that right, we got a release date for the video, we got a release date for the album, we got a budget, you get what I'm saying? We on radio now, it's us. You know, what's, how, how, does, how did that, how did, what, was, what was the difference in that feeling versus the feeling of being on the road as the background guy? Well, honestly, it still felt surreal until things actually started to unfold. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, that's just like, you know, you jumping on a lit, you know what I'm saying? And somebody telling you they got some bread for you, you feel me? You're not going to actually have that feeling. Like, seven nigga told me he had 100 racks for me. I ain't going to actually get excited about the 100 racks until the shit in my hand. You feel me? So, yeah, of course it was, you know what I'm saying, exciting, you know, when they told us that we, they gave us our release date, you know, things didn't start tapping into me realistically. Still, like shit started moving, like we got on the radio, the interviews started, you know what I'm saying? They had the video on the way, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that, you feel me? So I, when that started happening, I'm like, fuck, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, here, it's, it's go time, you yeah. feel me? So, yeah, and I was, you know, I'm thankful for everything, you know what I'm saying? Cause like dude gave me an opportunity, gave all us an opportunity to be heard. And that's some shit niggas nowadays ain't really trying to do, you feel me? They ain't trying to invest in the artist, you feel me? Whether you new or old, they just want some, I'm gonna get me type shit. Records, you feel me? Do you? But at the end of the day, like that shit was just like I said, the real first. But once those things started, off, I already knew it was up from now. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this, Mike. I want a lot of up and coming artists to hear this. All right, now, uh, just give some of the pros and cons of being in the record industry. Like everybody, we see the TV, we know about being on radio, going on tour. That's the fun shit. Explain some of the shit that go on behind the scenes that motherfuckers just don't know about, but it's part of the everyday struggle. You feel me? Man, a part of the everyday struggle, like, don't believe these niggas out here that be acting like they getting all this money, you know what I'm saying? Flashing all this money, all this shit. A lot of rent, a lot of that shit be another nigga money, you know what I'm saying? They partners, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you feel me? Well, if you ain't getting it out the mud, if you ain't coming to it already with money, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a fucking process. You feel me? You got to wait your turn. You really got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, grind it out. You dig? That's just like, if you were working a job, you gotta wait for your, your payday, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna come into that job and get paid that first day of work. Right. You feel me? So you gotta put your grind in. It's a you know, it's a long time company, you dig? And if your product really hitting on shit, you gotta go back in the lab, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not like you just gonna come with some fucking fire ass hit, you feel me? I mean, very few do, you know what I'm saying? But some get lucky, but it's not like you just gonna come with it that one time and bam, it's a banger now. Put the shit out and we gonna make money. No, fuck no, that shit is time consuming, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get in the studio, come up song after song, you feel me? Like, gotta get, get approved by the labels, you know what I'm saying? Then uh, at the same time, fuck, you gotta get the budget. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, it's like, it's basically, you just gotta convince the motherfuckers to believe in you. You feel me? You halfway there, you know what I'm saying? If you in that position, but like I said, the grind, getting it out the mud, you know what I'm saying? And it's time where you ain't gonna get no sleep, you know what I'm saying? You gonna get into it with one another, you feel me? Cause y'all ain't gonna be on the same page at all the time, especially a group. You know right. what I'm saying? Everybody got their own little egos, you feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? This person ain't gonna agree with this person. This person gonna come on the song, this, you know what I'm saying, in this position. So it's just a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta have a, a stable mind at the end of the day and able to, you know, able to control it. You feel me? Like, it's like, you know, at the end of the day, everybody is to be successful, you feel me? But the process that it takes to fucking get to the success or get to the top, that shit rough. You know what I'm saying? That shit like, it's just, it's, it's always, it's almost like you're in a, a barrel with, you know what I'm saying, crabs. You feel me? Like something's gonna pull you down, something's gonna hold you back, and then you got your, your, your already got your fucking for life situations that you're facing every day. You know what I'm saying? You gotta find ways to come up with this type of revenue. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you ain't making no money right now because it's, you're in the process of making money. You feel me? You grind. So as long as you chase the grind, the money gonna come, but fuck. But like I say, within the time of you grinding, fuck, you gotta find other way to make means meet. You know what I'm saying? So that shit, yeah, that shit, that shit, that shit, that shit ain't no fucking joke, man. That shit, struggle. You feel me? Right. 
doing shit that you never thought you would do in your life. You know what I'm saying? Right. For real. But I mean, you got to get it by any means necessary. You did because you're trying to make it somewhere. You feel so you got to just believe in a situation. And but it's it's, it's time. Take time, you feel me? You gotta be patient. You got you you can't go twelve years and dig in that thirteen year, you won't quit. Cause you never know when that thirteen year that might be your that might be your break. You mm-hmm. feel me? But niggas don't you know, they give up. You feel me? And then you gotta think you got all these other fucking artists out here, you know, a lot of them ain't hitting on shit, but they in addition, you feel me? So they get more recognition than you. You know what I'm saying? They being heard more than you because they got a budget. You feel me? Or they got the type of source to put them in the play that you don't have. So it's a lot of shit working against you, you feel me? You just, like I said, you just gotta be patient, work your turn, and put, you feel me? The shit ain't gonna happen for me, And I heard, I, I wanna piggyback off of something you said as far as the group. Now we ain't gotta talk about the chops of the boss per se, but I'm saying groups in general. What's the, what, what do you see uh, the ups and downs that come with being in a group? Cause a lot of groups break up, some people fall out over money, some people fall out over egos. What are the, cause it's still positive sides of being in a group too. So what's the positive and the negative when it comes to group versus you the solo? The positive uh, side of group. positive and negative when it comes to being in a group as opposed to a solo well, artist. I'm gonna start with the positive. The po- to me, the positive side of being in a group is if you got that special camaraderie, you feel me, you're unstoppable because the chemistry there. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you were a team that's like they just goats, like you know what I'm saying, young goats in the making, you feel me? So if you got niggas, you know what I'm saying, well rounded like you, you feel me, and y'all put that shit together, man. That shit like Never you concoct that shit gonna be A1. You feel me? Like, so that's the good thing about it. More than one mind, you know, bringing it to the table, you feel me? Right, it's right. making it well around. So that's to me, that's that's the pro about it. Well, you know, the positive side. To me, the negative side, ego. niggas don't know how to put their ego to the side, you feel me? And that's why all the big, you feel me? Like, nigga, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a lot of ego, you know what I'm saying? Because it ain't the money, you feel me? At the end of the day, if you getting money, you know what I'm saying, like, it's no reason, you feel me, for an ego to even come into play, you feel me? I mean, I ain't gonna say it like that because, you know, certain niggas, when they get more money than a nigga, they feel different from the next one, you feel me? But if you level-headed, you know what I'm saying, it shouldn't play a part, but, like I say, certain niggas don't, you feel me? But, like, yeah, that ego, that ego, fuck it up, like, for real, for real. It ain't have you turn into your brother if you ain't strong enough, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga that you rock with day in and day out, you feel me? Your ego jump in the play, you like fuck it, nigga, you know what I'm saying? And it should never be that, you feel me? But it's gonna happen. It's like brothers, you know what I'm saying? We we was like brothers. We had our times where we got into it, you know what I'm saying? At each other throat about to fight. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, fuck, I was but that God fixed that. You know, he came and play and he made me to realize man was bigger than me. Right, right, right. But he was at each other throat plenty of time, you know what I'm saying? Real. You know, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know you, yeah, you probably had to stop some shit. You know, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, now, another thing, okay, I want, I want you to explain this too, because a lot of people need to hear this. Like, what is that, being an artist in the industry, explain the importance of networking and building relationships, man. Because a lot of artists, especially up and coming artists, they don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Explain the importance of that. I mean, it's very vital. You feel me? You have to build relationships because if you don't build relationships, it's going to stop at some point. You know what I'm saying? It's like you planting the seed. And if you don't water that seed, you feel me? It's not going to grow how you need it to grow. Not how you want it to grow, but how you need it to grow. So relationships is very important. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need a certain resource. Like, I have all the talent in the world. But if I don't have the business to back up my talent, you feel me? Then I'm going to just be running around in a circle, just making music, you feel me? I'm gonna be a studio rapper, you feel me? My shit get heard. So I need that other, that you feel me for as like a manager or a promoter to tap into or any little type of individual that can become essential to what I got going on, you feel me? So you definitely need to fucking, you know what I'm saying, network, you feel me? You gotta network, you can't have them fucking egos, you can't feel like you're better than the next man, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you never know, it could be the nigga that be behind you on the stage while you rapping, you feel me? And blow up faster than you, you feel me? And it's just like, you never know what people got come, you know, what, what God got in store for people. So you just got to have a main that way, you feel me? And just keep focused and just keep pushing. You feel me? Like that network, you feel me? That shit is stronger than you think. Cause that shit will turn in from one to a million easy. Right, 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 right. Gone. Right. 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 Right.
We Got This came out on Koch. And then I think the, new, the first single was Make Them Mad. You feel yeah. me? Make Them Mad. Uh, now, I wanted to see another single come out behind that. You get what I'm saying? You feel right. me? And of course, the, the budget wasn't there from the label to do that. But now that you know what you know, how important is it to spend your own money on yourself? Like, even though the label not, don't believe in this next single, I feel like we should do another single, so I'm going to pay for it out of my pocket. You get what I'm saying? And then right. I make them accept it once they once I put the grind in. How important is that now, knowing what you know? You feel me? Oh, that shit. Like, at the end of the day, you got to invest in yourself because but first and foremost, you got to believe in yourself before anybody else. That's what's going to get the ball rolling. You feel me? And these labels, a lot of labels, you know what I'm saying? They do shit to benefit themselves. You feel me? So, you know, they'll put a little budget behind you, you know what I'm saying, for a little marketing, a little video, you know what I'm saying? If they're bam, they shoot to the next project, whatever they got coming up. They forget all about you, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you're not blazing up the charts. So it's like, that's why you got to put that groundwork in and get in the streets, you feel me? Because that's where it starts. They come from the streets to the motherfucking clubs, to club DJs, bring it to the radio. You feel me? So, and if you don't have that budget, because you're not buzzing, you got to fucking come up with it on your own. You feel me? Like, we dropped a Mega Mad video, and I feel like our project could have foreseen it, and it could have surpassed, you know what I'm saying, a lot more. Like, you know, we set records, but at the end of the day, you feel me? It could have went a lot further if we would have had a second video, because during that time with the music, that's what gave your music and your fucking, you know what I'm saying, put you on a higher platform when you constantly dropping videos. You feel me? Because that visual going to be out. And, you know, by that visual... Oh, that just make people tap into you more because they had the BET, the 106 and Park, you know what I'm saying, MTV. So if you was on that, you was something major. You feel me? Like nobody was really looking for you if you were just underground. You know what I'm saying? You had to be something serious to be on that platform. Right. You feel me? Right. So yeah, definitely, you know what I'm saying? It's very important to invest in yourself. You feel me? Because like I say, once your budget runs out, you don't want it to run out because if it do run out and you ain't got nothing to back it up, you, you at a standstill. You feel me? And that's something that you don't want to do because they got a billion other people behind you that's trying to surpass you. You feel me? So once you're on that, you riding that wave, you got to continue to move. You know what I'm saying? Because once you get stuck, you feel me? It's easy as fuck to be in this industry and make moves while you're in the position, while you're in the, you know what I'm saying? You want to keep your name in the, the conversation. But once you ain't the top of the conversation, it's hard as a motherfucker. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Trying to pull a casket out the ground without digging the dirt up. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. This thing you gotta keep moving, you feel me? Like put that put that grind in, you know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself, how you expect others to believe? You feel me? So and they gonna try, you feel me? Like you gotta show a motherfucker that without you, I'm still gonna keep this train moving. Right, 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 right. It is. Now, now after after the Chop City Boys album on Cox, we got this. The next album, a deal was done with Asylum for uh Life in a Concrete Jump. And I like that album, to be honest with you. It didn't get as much publicity as, as, uh, as we got this. But I like that album. Which, which one was your favorite? My favorite joint on that, to be honest with you, was Dealer. You feel oh, really? me? Right. Yeah. I think that was Jeezy's favorite joint, too. You feel right. me? Oh, that was just how it brought to me that favorite joint. But that was right. my favorite joint. Yeah, man, I like, I like the album, man. I like that. I wish we would have got a little more promotion behind it. Man, that album had so many fucking bangers on it. You feel me? And, 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 and that time... It's like we spread our wings a lot more because we actually had a chance to have other artists, other camps, you know what I'm saying, that had things going on on our album. You feel me? So it was, you feel me? We was walking our plant, our seeds, and you know what I'm saying? We, we was growing. But I just feel like a lot of shit was going on and the ball got dropped. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Dropped, we would have been in a much better position at that time than we was. You feel me? Right. Like we could. We could have been able to, you know what I'm saying, pretty much not say help Jeezy because he, you know, he had a household name. Like, he's standing, you feel me? We was trying to get out of the And to be honest with you, we got out of the to do him, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, right. we expected us more on the journey, you feel me? So I salute him for that. Okay, but it's like, if that, if, if they would have just pushed the album a lot more and focused on that album a lot more, man, shit, Chopper City would have never. You feel me? Even by being in jail, we still would have been running. You know what I'm saying? Because fuck that album, that epic, a lot of, you know what I'm saying? A lot of fucking. We, to me, I feel like you feel. So me? You feel like you feel like what? You feel like what? Ahead of our time on that album. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I and it mean. wasn't it wasn't even it was just me to be honest with you by it being because you know rest in peace VL he got killed so he wasn't right. on that album, you know what I'm saying and Kizzle he wasn't on that album, you know what I'm saying it was just me G's and fucking God holding it. Right. You feel right. Me? like you know a three headed goat at the same time, you feel me? But we was making it work, you feel me? And it's just right. like I don't know what happened, you feel me? Yeah, I get it, bro. I get it. Let's talk about VL Mike. We ain't gonna go into the situation that happened, but you know what I'm saying? You know, rest in peace, VL. That was all our brother right there. Uh man, what kind of this dude was alive while, bro. I love that nigga though, man. What kind of what kind of to you, what kind of energy did this nigga bring to the table, man? This nigga Mike was crazy as a motherfucker. That, that was fucking like <laughs> it's just the shit he would say, like, you know what I'm saying? Even like the lyrics, like take a a G knife and kick a hole in your fucking chest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? He was just on his own time, you feel me? And yeah. he was he was he was older than all of us in the group, yep. so he was like my brother. But the minute he came around, you know what I'm saying? He embraced me with open arms. It's like me and him had that fucking chemistry. We locked in, you know, eight down. He was a cool ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, he was high headed. You wow. feel me? That bitch ain't wanna listen. You know what I'm saying? Being out there in the streets, I guess that we did it to him coming up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know his struggle. Hey, hey, check this out. I'm gonna tell you this story, but hey, you know the Hey, check this out. I'm going to tell you the story, man. You know, how, you know how me and Mike got close, bro? Check this out. This is funny as shit. I ain't never told about this shit. Hey, so listen. This is how I first met Mike. He comes he come to the office at Chopper City, right? He coming out to, uh, he coming in there to uh, meet with Carl about some music or whatever. This is the, this is the first office in Metro, you feel me? So uh, I, go, I go in the office, Mike in there. We walk past, yeah. I walk, we look at each other. We don't speak, though. We look at each other up and down. We don't say nothing to each other. I come talk to Carl. I leave back out. You feel me? Right. Next day. Now keep in mind, we looked at each other. We didn't speak. He looked at me. He didn't say shit. I ain't say shit to him. You know what I'm saying? I, I walked out. Well, uh, well, uh, this was division. Huh? Huh? This was the office on division. On division. On division. division. Yeah. So he back there in Carol back office. He he back to talking. The door closed. She called me to bring some music or something. Now, so I go in there. I gotta go past him to get the hug. We look each other up and down. We don't say shit to each other. You feel what I'm saying? He don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. I leave out the office. The next day. Carol in the studio, she got me playing some music. And that's Jesus song, uh, I do what I gotta do to stay out chill. Cause believe me, these cheesy has been out chill. I hear somebody come on rapping. I've been out chill, right. boy, you don't know my pain. I got busted up town, a thousand grams of pure cocaine. I said, who was just talking like this? Somebody got caught with all that. She said, that's VL yeah. Mike, Ma. I said, that little skinny dude who was in the office yesterday. <laughs> she said, don't let that shit fool you, man. My Mike crazy as a motherfucker. I said, this little dude, that's him talking like this? She said, yeah, that's Mike. I said, damn, okay. So I started listening to him then. We still hadn't spoken. I said, okay, this nigga spit some shit right here. He coming to the office the next day. I ain't yeah. gonna record him in the studio. Get what he tell me. He tell me, yeah, man, when you walking in, you ain't speak to me, man. I like that shit, because I be doing niggas like that too. <laughs> I said, that nigga Mike. <laughs> I said, this nigga Mike, right? That's why I knew Coco then. Nigga say, I like how you ain't speak to me, because I do niggas like that too, bro. It, was man. a live wire. You hear me? He, yeah, he was he was very observant. He, yeah. He watching. You know what I'm saying? Everything that's going on. You feel me? Like figuring niggas out. You know what I'm saying? Seeing who he could attack. Uh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? How he could attack a situation. But like I said, at the end of the day, he was a good nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that yeah, nigga yeah. like yeah. I mean, he came so tough. It was, it was like a sniping Mike. You know what I'm saying? Like for real. Yeah. Like, yeah for man. real. For real. Like I was. That nigga was like my big brother. He was showing me a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Real, he used to come get me, you dig? I mean, one day he came and got me. I was in the East, you feel me? He came and got me in like a like yellow Ferrari, you feel me? And I was like, damn, bitch, you doing it like that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he had his life, he was doing it. Yeah, he, he was doing like, a little shit, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That nigga put sure. me on a couple. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, you know what I'm saying? I, I was big bro, you feel me? I hate to see that shit happen to him. Like, yeah, man. I had just yeah. talk to him. Yeah, man. My birthday was April 18. You feel me? My birthday was April 18. He died April 20. I had just talked to him. He had called me. He was in that And I was in the NOP. He called me to wish me a happy birthday. Like, man, brother, I'll be down there in a little while. You feel me? I'm like, I right, let me know. We can link up so we get down. And fuck, when I got that news, I'm like, fuck, that shit. Yo, I had called the radio and everything. I was on the radio, but why I ain't talking about that shit? I be deep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I never forget that day, bro. I never forget that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right. Rest in peace, man. Yeah. Who gonna live? You know what I'm saying? 
to hold him down, you feel me? To, you know, to the death of him. And the trip part about it, I still feel like with, you know what I'm saying, the big drama, you know what I'm saying? I be seeing him running and everything like that. People don't know that. I still, still, you know what I mean? Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Rest in peace, VL uh, Mike, man. All right, now tonight, you, you moved on, you started your own situation, CPO, Clutch Players Only. Uh, you know, put out a few projects under that situation right there. Let's talk about this conspiracy mixtape. Uh, they released, what, about, I guess about a year ago, something like that, you feel me? Uh, about two years, two years. Two years ago, all right. And I'm in one of the videos, facts. I'm yeah. in one of the videos that was shot in New Orleans East. I got a cameo appearance on that thing, you hear me? Yeah, man. And then, well, it's right, though. Yeah, you know, come on, bro. You know what it is. I ain't gonna, man, it's, it's always gonna be a connection right there, man. You feel me? Oh, uh, I'm gonna tell you a song I like that you did, bro. I like that uh, you redid UNLV, uh, Dragon in the River. Okay. I, like, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I like that, man. I like that. Now, here recently, you just did another mixtape called uh, Bounce Back. You feel me? Yeah. Now, people in New Orleans, we, you know, y'all are known for the bounce rules. A lot of people outside of New Orleans don't understand their culture. I do because I was down there for so long. So, well, right. explain kind of what 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 were you going with this bounce back? What was the whole point of that, and what was you trying to what were you, what were you going with that? To be honest with you, what fueled the fire to that, bro, is I just was getting tired of motherfuckers taking our sound, you know what I'm saying, and not you know acknowledging the where it originated at, you know what I'm saying, like with the bounce music, you know what I mean? And they would get they would receive, you know what I'm saying, all the accolades from it, and. It just would be like, oh, that was another fire song, you know what I'm saying? And it feel like I feel like it would take our sound and probably like take an artist from here, you know, throw them on a sample, you know, just to get that clearance in New Orleans. But fuck right. that, you know what I'm saying? Right. I gotta give respect, pay homage to where that shit came from. So that's what made me drop that shit because I wanted a motherfucker to let them know, you know what I'm saying? This is where the shit was originated at, you know what I'm saying? This the true sound. You feel me? Not saying that their music was trash, because you know they had a few joints out there that dropped that bounce music, you know what I'm saying? That shit was nice, you feel me? I, I appreciate them bringing that, you know, broadening the bounce sound because they gave it more opportunity. They put it on a pedestal to ask, okay, this is where it came. You know what I'm saying? New Orleans. Even though they didn't say it, like talking about it, right. you knew about it, you feel me? Because, you know what I'm saying? If you know New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? You know our music, they tapped into it even more by the Drakes and the Chris Browns, you know what I'm saying? Putting their music out there, bounce twist to it. You feel right. so, me? Me and D-Day, shout out to D-Day, he, he executive produced the fucking, you know what I'm saying? The whole uh, LP. It's just five oh, songs. Shout out to Shout Who? I missed the name. Shout out to who now? D-Day. D-Day, okay, all right, all right. D-Day, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, he an artist from New Orleans, you know what I'm saying, that transitioned into a producer. You feel right. me? So he been on he been on the tracks cutting up like motherfucking, and shout out to him, because he was like, you know, when the first song catch a vibe he was like man you know what we need to go ahead and make history. you know what i'm saying because me and him we made history a long time ago because he off the west bank you feel me and it's like we did a song you feel me i did a hook for him, you know what I'm saying? a long time ago you feel me and we shot the video at like all the views and like you know in a week's time you know what I'm saying? and so they was fucking with it big. and for us to link back up you know what i'm saying that was just gonna happen that was you know just in the making you feel me and he you know, like I said, when we dropped the joint, Catch a Vibe, he was like, man, come on, man, let's lock in on the whole little project. And I was like, okay, let's do a little right quick, you know what I'm saying? And put it out there, you feel me? Like a five song I, EP, like a, it's a little EP, like a little EP, what you put out Yeah, like a quick little EP, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, the bitch was fire, you feel me? Like, they got, you know, they got five, five songs, they nice, you know what I'm saying? And my city, I did it based on the culture of my city too, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a bounce rapper, you feel me? But I just want to do a nigga tap into that market, you know what I'm saying, and compete as well, you feel me? Shout out to all the bounce artists in New Orleans, you feel me? Now, what plat what, what can we get this mixtape from tonight? What platforms or websites is it on? Well, oh, that bitch everywhere. That bitch on Tidal, Amazon, Spotify, okay. iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. Okay. Gotcha. Anything you can pretty much is on there, you know what I'm uh -huh. saying? It's back. And it's conspiracy on that, too. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, now what now? What we got coming soon? What, what, what can we expect next from Snipe, man? You know what I'm saying? What the what, what uh, are you talking about? What's you can expect a consistent grind. You can expect, like I said, a song I just dropped called Magic Show. You Magic feel me? Show. Produced by my dog Red. You know what I'm saying? Reg on the track. You feel me? And actually, that was his first ever, you know, production. You feel me? Like we went in. You know what I'm saying? That's why I flew out here too. You did to come fuck with him in the studio. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, that was his his first track he ever created. That picture, he did it for the ladies, you know, 
female driven. Cause you know, fuck, they always say I'm mean, I'm a ladies man, but for some strange reason, I got street niggas around me. You feel me? <laughs> I, be, I, be, I be disregarding that lady shit, you know what I'm saying? But I know one thing, if I've been on that lady kick, I probably, you know what I'm saying? Been the blue through the roof, you feel me? But it's all- fan good. base, bro. That's an old number fan hey, base. Mm-hmm. It was a bit, you know what I'm saying? I just was trying to stay true to my roots. But fuck that, I'm, I'm on the lady's hat now. Man, nigga don't really respect that G shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm get it out to your lady. Because <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, that's why when Jeezy heard me spit, Carol told me, she was like, man, Jeezy was like, man, Carol, you got a him. He's something different. Because I had spit some shit for the streets and some shit for the females, but he was like, you know, he was more so tuned in what I had for the ladies. So he was like, he different, Carol, you know what I'm saying? He gonna captivate a different crowd. I even remember when we was on stage at a concert at House of Blues in New Orleans, that nigga brought us out on stage. I think this was the first time he introduced us on stage. The fucking crowd was stupid packed. And he was like, man, you know, man, he brought us out. He was like, and he introduced me. He was like, man, look at this nigga. You know what I'm saying? That nigga pretty as a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> first, yeah, nigga, all, all the bitches don't want to fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? So you dig? Like, he, he put a nigga on that pedestal, you feel uh, me? Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I miss my bro, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully he be home real soon. Because I know, uh, last time I talked to him, he was like, man, I'm, I'm talking gangster shit on a whole other level. And I'm like, I don't do that because you, you had them old heads on shit. So I can imagine now, nah, you from, you know what I'm saying, BG to OG for real. Yeah, you know? yeah. He come he home real soon. Home, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With that fucking, his bag going to be ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> he just got to stay on that grind, man. He got to stay on that grind. He can't drop the ball. He'll get to Honestly, it. Honestly, I'm trying to make it to where when he come home, I got something situated for him, to be honest. But just to show my appreciation, you know, right. for him. Right. You feel me? Right, right. I get that. I get that. That's love. That's 100. That's 100. Yeah. Can't drop the ball. Got to keep rolling. I got to yeah. show him. Man, he ain't just sign no nigga you dig. And when he get locked up, you feel me? I'm just sitting on my ass. No, I'm keeping it going. I'm letting you know, you feel me? Like, I'm. I'm gonna keep the ball rolling, you feel me? Right, 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 right. Hey, well, man, my nigga Snipe, bro. I appreciate you tuning in, man. Before we check out, let everybody know where they can catch you on Instagram, Twitter, and all that shit. Give everybody social media information, bro. You feel me? Man, you can catch me on Instagram, CPO Snipe. Catch me on Twitter. I don't really be on that shit, but you know, my Twitter name is Chop City Bar. And Facebook, they didn't switch my shit, took me off as CPO Snipe. They put it as Travis Edwards. I don't know, they got some shit going on. You feel me? I don't fuck up with Facebook either, but you know what I'm saying? I do be on that time to time. Like I say, mainly Instagram, you know what I'm saying? CPO Snipe, you feel me? And you could be looking for a lot of me because it, it don't never stop. Music is time. You feel me? And I appreciate you. You already know we got. Man, it's all love, man. We family, man. Come on, you know we go, man. You know what it is, man. It's nothing, man. Yeah, we gotta, you, we just bro, you just a bro away. You know what I'm saying? That's you, it, bro. That's it, man. Phone call. You, you know it's all love, man. You fuck with a nigga. You know what I'm I gotta come out there to the chat, man. You do, man. man. Listen, you 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 an hour and a half away from me right now, bro. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna make. I'll be back in Atlanta in a couple of weeks. So when I come back, you know what I'm saying? I'm coming touch the chat, and we gonna fuck shit you up. Got in the to. Chat. Oh. You got to give me a heads up. I I laid I laid a red carpet. I was give me a heads up, bro. I got you. It ain't nothing. Yeah, because yeah, I was just in the D. I was just in Detroit like last Detroit. week. Detroit. You know what I'm saying? You know, the second home. Yeah, you, you know, know, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah that nigga, know. they came, but that nigga gotta definitely come to the chat. You know what I'm saying? And fuck and fuck with you, cause you know what I'm saying. I don't get it twisted, now. I don't say too much, but I see you. You know what I'm saying? You steady on the grind, like you Always. move. This Always. You know, man, that's, that's one thing they got to understand about you. Like, it don't stop, you know what I'm saying? Like, you constantly moving. You, It's like you, I, at one time, I'm looking, I'm like, man, this nigga on two. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this nigga, that city, fucking with this artist, I, you know what I'm saying? You on the road with eight ball in them. I'm like, man, right, this nigga, right. you know you under the radar, but you really on the radar, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, that, right. You right. Because it, that, give, that give me that passion to keep going, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's a non-stop really? grind style. We both know that, man. It's like working overtime, bro. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't it's unlimited hours, bro. You feel me? Morning, noon, and night. Ain't no sleep. You did. You did. <laughs> what they don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's like it ain't even over for the Chopper City, the mall, the pimp lady. That man, once this will come back home, man, that shit ain't gonna do nothing but rekindle. You feel me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's because it's one big family. Whether we right. talk to you, you know what I'm saying, today, 20 years from now, it's still family. You know what I'm saying? That love's still there. We oh, still tell you. Like it never happened. Like we never separated. You feel me? This been this been since two thousand four, right here, dog. You feel me? We talking yeah, sixteen years now. 
family. This is family. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I don't give a fuck with no nigga say this is family. This is my family. Well. You know what I'm saying? So, man, we're going Huh? Thanks, man. Do your thing. We're going to be in touch, my nigga. You know what I'm saying, man? Let me know when you come back this way, bro. Now we're going we gonna to make some shit happen. You hear me? Fucking right. You know what I'm saying? And I got to say big up to Soldier Slim. Rest in peace, my dog. Soldier Slim, you feel right. me? Right. You know? Free BG. You know? And free all my niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's in that can. You feel me? Rest in peace to all my niggas. I don't even want to name them because it's a list. I keep naming. They will be unstoppable. <laughs> you feel me? You know it. You know it. Y'all also, go ahead. Right. To your niggas and free your niggas as well. Yeah, man, I got a be I got a bunch of rest in peace, a bunch of free this nigga, free that nigga. Yeah, it's a right. bunch, of, bunch of that, man, a bunch of that. We just gotta hold our head for no dog. You feel me? But yeah, I appreciate you having me, pimping. You know what I'm saying? You know anything you need from me, it's nothing but a phone call. I appreciate you tonight, man. Good looking out for checking in, homie. Good looking out, dog. Yeah, sure. love you, bro. Take care of yourself, up, my nigga. Yeah, stupid ass Corona shit. You know what I'm saying?